Hello and welcome to what promises to be a particularly stimulating evening of conversation on Off the Cuff or OTC. And I say particularly stimulating because our guest today is Fali Nariman, who speaks very little, but when he does speak, everybody listens. And most of all, the judges listen. And he doesn't have to just speak in the court, he can speak outside the court, he can speak in newspapers, he can speak on TV, he's, the, if I may say so, conscience keeper of Indian judiciary and Indian constitution uh, for many, many, many decades. So we have Fali here and we have a wonderful audience. Uh, and I promise you this will be a scintillating evening. So Fali, uh, when you go to bed these days, what is it that makes you happy about the state of our constitutional democracy? And what is it that worries you? What makes me happy is the vibrant nature of our democracy. What makes me sad is that not too many people who should speak up, speak up for people's rights and liberties. Fali, uh, when you say uh, not enough people speak for liberties and rights, uh, give us some examples. You see, when you meet a lot of people, they're all a little wary of the powers that be. And the powers that be don't necessarily include government. Not, they don't exclusively. The powers that be include the big companies, the big corporates, and people like that. So I, therefore, like this business of the social media, media where people do converse quite freely, much more freely than the regular press or the regular media or, uh, uh, and so on. And it is there that you pick up all the little gossip that goes on in the country, much of which may or may not be true, but at least it's entertaining. Whereas, <laughs> whereas we, we find that the media nowadays, and I feel bored listening to all the spokesmen of each and every political party every wretched night, <laughs> because they all say the same thing on behalf of their respective parties, and I don't know why the, the media, the electronic media, cannot invite individual members of political parties who are not spokesmen of the party in order to get their views. I don't see any, any wrong in that. Why do you only ask the spokesman? Because the spokesperson only said what he is bespoken to. That is, he's told that this is what you must say. And he will never confess that the party is wrong. Never. Neither the leading the present majority party, nor the opposition, nor any one of the other parties. But I have to, I have to tell you this, that not... And every single channel does this. Every single channel. Yes, Fali, the sa same spokesman can be on five channels at the same time. Yeah, that and, I, and, I wonder and, how it, uh, that happens. And each one calls it exclusive, yes. right? Uh, so I sometimes think that they employ body doubles. <laughs> but, the, but the fact is that parties now control who speaks on their behalf. So parties don't let other people go. How uh, do you mean don't let other people they, go? They give a list of spokesmen. And then and you resign from the party. Oh. <laughs> resign from the party. You get expelled like me. You get expelled. Or you get, get expelled get, like get, Mr. Amar You see, I, I think that, no, I, I, I really mean this. I've often felt this, and this is a public platform on which I wish to air this. I, I don't know why these editors of all these news channels invite the same set of fellows. I, I, I feel bored looking at them. Every night, the same set of channels, as you say, in every channel. You switch one, switch the other, switch the other. Yeah, every, they're boring, absolutely boring. And they say the same wretched things themselves. Well, so why do you ask the spokesman? There are so many eminent, decent human beings who have views, who may belong to a party or may not. Invite them. Ask them their views. Why not? Why don't you do that? That's a very good point, I hope. They do it all over the world. I yes. don't know. We only don't do this. Yes, absolutely. And I think... And if there's one theme, one theme runs through all the channels. Why? Let, let's have another theme, for God's sake. Anyway, that's <laughs> my complaint. <laughs> we start, see? Once you get funny on They won't stage, invite me anymore. <laughs> so the funny on stage, we are the first to get our admonition. But rights, funny. Uh, which rights 
are the ones, which citizens' rights that you feel that you worry about now? Which ones are under threat or which ones are shrinking? You or see, contracting? the Constitution is under threat. Let me be very frank. With the massive electoral victory in Uttar Pradesh, which the priest installed at the chief instance minister. of the prime minister as the chief minister, it, like the cherry on the victory cake. So that is a signal. And if you can't see it, then you must be either the spokesman of the political party <laughs> or you must be have your head, your eyes examined. Because of, but it's there. It's there. I mean, let's not, let's face it, let's not poo poo about it or let's not just uh, uh, make fun about it. There's no, there's no need to do that. They're entitled to say what they want to, but the message is very clear. And what, what you want to do in reaction to that is for you, all of you to decide, all of us to decide. Sorry, not you, all of us to decide. And, and, and you think that all of us are not taking sufficient notice of it? We are oh. being complacent? We are being hypocritical, not complacent, hypocritical. You, you, you never like to say anything like this. Oh my God, what will the prime minister say if he finds that Mr. Nariman has criticized this? That's no, ridiculous. no, I'll say, I'll say Mr. Nariman said this. <laughs> <laughs> this is a exactly. cherry, cherry on the cake. Exactly. So I'll fire the gun from your shoulder. Exactly, but you, you must give it to the prime minister. You see, he's quite forthright. Right. He doesn't mince words. And his energy is something remarkable. Absolutely. I told you the other day, his energy is fantastic. I've never seen a man with such fantastic energy. But there my comment ends. I mean, I, I, that, I don't accept all the policies of the prime minister. And I say this quite openly. There's no, 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 no doubt does, about it. Does the constitution have the strength to withstand such a statement of majority, if not majoritarianism? This is the problem. The constitution has the strength. But the people who support the constitution don't. Here are members of parliament, many of them I see, some of them I don't see, but they, they are all here in, in the country. It is for them to question the prime minister and to ask him, why has no, no correspondent of any, any leading uh, 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 channel asked the uh, uh, prime minister, prime minister, is it true, as this fellow Nariman seems to suggest, that, uh, that this is the beginning of a Hindu state. Ask him. I'm sure he'll, he'll say something which is quite characteristic of him because he's a very uh, enlightened person. I mean, make no mistake. Uh, he's, he's not one of And your, he speaks his mind. Uh, and he speaks his mind. So at least you'll know what to be prepared for. If you, you say, please re realize this, all of you. It's the Hindu majority that gave us this constitution. Right. Uh, 85% of people at the time of the Constituent Assembly, 85% of the members of the Constituent Assembly, 233 out of 299 or some, some such a figure, were orthodox Hindus, which Rajendra Prasad is the most orthodox of all. And they gave us this magnificent constitution. I say magnificent, and I dare anyone to say it's not. It's this magnificent constitution. All of you young people who have studied the constitution know it. And it has given us an a, a, a added advantage by having that Bill of Rights, which most constitutions don't. And a Bill of Rights that works, or is made to work, except that it didn't work during the internal emergency of June 75 to 1977, which gave us an inoculation, as it were. Okay, what can happen? If, if you are not vigilant. And that's what happened when you were not vigilant. And so therefore, I, I, I always say that one should be forthright in one's views, political views also. Ask the prime minister, is this true? That what these, uh, these people are now pretending to say? Or are you, is, there, is there going to be a Hindu state? Please tell us, we must know. Because if there is, there's going to be an amendment of the constitution. There's going to be some problem which the judiciary may have to face, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we know, but no member of parliament has so far asked him, parliament is in session. I've been reading the newspapers every day. Everybody gets up and protests at this, that, or the other. But not one member of parliament has asked him this question. Why not? I, I fail to see why not. 
he's, he's a very forthright person. I mean, he, he will appreciate someone asking him this. What he, the answer he gives is for him. See, when some of us ask this question in public debate, we are told, but if somebody can be a member of, elected a member of parliament five times, why can't he be chief minister? But let, let him say that. I'm asking you a different question. He can. Nobody stops him. Nobody stops him. But it's a little odd that he should also be a head priest. Little odd. Fali, uh, you said you worry about the fact that constitution is under threat and people whose charge it is to protect it may not have the strength to, yes, to protect and, it. Yes, and, and please, they, they protect it in their own interest also. Because look how well looked after members of parliament are. Here's one. He'll tell you. I, I was one, and I'm still looked after extraordinarily well, I must tell you. I, I, I get an enormous pension. Enormous means, well, it's quite, quite enormous, 20,000 or some such thing. A pension a month, well, that's quite a lot for anybody. And, and you are looked after by the state. And the state looks after everybody, not just the leading the members of the leading party, but for everybody, every member of parliament. Therefore, it's part of their function to see that the constitution is protected. If they don't protect the constitution, it's very difficult, I feel, for the judiciary to do so. Especially if you re remember the role of the judiciary during the emergency, which was abysmal. That, that's yes. the problem. So how would you compare this period with the oncoming of the emergency, the six months before the emergency? There is a comparison. People who haven't, I mean, most of you, some of you, of course, have, but most of you haven't lived through the emergency. Some of us have lived through the emergency. So we know what it is to live through an emergency. It's very difficult, very difficult. People don't speak to each other. We used to have two great stalwarts in our, in our, in our bar. One was C.K. Daftari, former attorney general. The other was Sundalal Desai, who was a senior advocate. And they would always, during the emergency, I'd go very early to court. I always go early to court. And at 10 o'clock, they would also come to court. Each one would sit opposite one to one another. There was Daftari puffing at his pipe. And uh, Sundalal, with his cigarette in that third and fourth finger, puffing away at his cigarette. And uh, Sundalal would tell Daftari, Chandubai, Bolo. <laughs> Chandubai, with sparkle in his eyes, he was a brilliant man. Tame pelle bolo. <laughs> you speak first. <laughs> you speak first. In the emergency, it was like that. Nobody could speak. Nobody would speak. And that, that encapsulated. This is an encapsulated symbol of what is the emergency. That's, all, that's really what happened. Nobody would say anything. These are troublesome times. Today in a majority community also, nobody says anything. They're all very worried. I think one thing they say is, but please remember, even today, 80% of the country is Hindu. Right. So, so actually, it's up to, it's what the Hindus ultimately say that will, will, will be the, the, right. the rule. Not rule of law, but rule of Hindu law or Hindus, whatever it's, it is. It's what the Parsis say will be the rule of law. Oh, God, no. <laughs> but I can promise you. We Parsis are finished. <laughs> can Although never I must be. tell you, we are the most preferred minority community Absolutely. in the country. <laughs> <laughs> For which I give Mr. Modi full marks. Full marks. <laughs> I bet he speaks with you in Gujarati. Uh -huh. I bet he speaks with you in Gujarati. Oh, yes, yes. He's extraordinarily affable. He's extraordinarily kind. He's very, very, very generous. Of, and, but I am amazed always at his, uh, at, uh, at the energy here. When you meet him at the president's banquet or something at 8 o'clock at night, he comes and speaks to you in Gujarati. And he says this, that, and the other. I'm always reminded, actually, of a, of a line from a, from a favorite poem of mine. I don't know if you know. The, Rudyard Kipling has written one of the best poems in the English language. It's called If. If, if, yeah. You must get it and read it. In, there's a line there which says, if you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, then... All the earth is yours, and what's more, you'll be a man, my son. 
What a brilliant poet. What a brilliant poet. Yeah. So, Fali, uh, six months leading up to the emergency and the period now. Why does this remind you of that? It reminds me because you have to be beware. But in order to beware, you have to know something. If you go around woolly-headed, not knowing what's happened, you must know our past. Nobody cares what happened pre-Google. Uh, that's, that's the problem. That's the problem. <laughs> that's the problem. You, you have to know your past. Please. You have to know. And you have to know your remote past also. And I beg you, all of you students, for instance, we, I, I was a student, and I was so inspired by Nehru's discovery of India. All of you read Nehru's discovery of India. There's not a better book on the history of India than Nehru's discovery. It's written so simply and so excellently. And believe me, despite what anybody may say, I'm a Nehruvian. <laughs> I confess that. Although Nehru is not so much in fashion anymore. Not at all. Not at all. But look here, Sardar Patel also wrote the Constitution. Absolutely. <laughs> Our first question is actually from a student. Sir, uh, just now you said that there's a threat to the country or the constitution because of the Hindutva factor. I would like you to remind that uh, the latest uh, census data published by the Modi government shows that there has been a 0.7% decline in the Hindu population. Yeah, from 85 the, to 80. The first time the Hindu population has declined, uh, come below 80% and the mu Muslim population oh, has yeah. grown 0.8%. Yeah. So good. how do you still see that there is a Hindutva factor involved in this and uh, it's because, a threat to the community. Because 80% is much more than the, than the entire Muslim population of <laughs> but India. But the decline has been for the first time since always we have been growing, but this was the first time when we... Yes, uh, sir. Take steps to improve that, to improve it. <laughs> the Muslims have found a good way. 